Amen, amen, amen. Go ahead and take your seats. We're going to just get right into this. Yes, sir. You know what the Lord has just been dealing with me on for, I don't know, the past few weeks, a month or so, is, is faith. Amen. Because everything we do requires faith Amen. and trust and confidence in God. Amen. Amen. Knowing that he will never leave us nor forsake Amen. us. Regardless of what the situation looks like, what it dictates. Yes, sir. God will never leave you hanging. Amen. And I'm just going to start right into this. And, and, and I'm going to use a lot of the scriptures that I used the same, uh, same time when I was up here a few weeks ago. But God wants to shift this in a different direction. And mainly what we have to understand is that as believers, you know, when we stand on the promises of God, and when our light shines, it causes others to glorify and magnify the Father. Amen. So when we walk it out, you know, it allows somebody else to see that we can minister to and cause them to walk it out. Because remember, it's not, it, it, it's not about us. It's not about what I'm going through. It's about what I, where I need to get to. Because somebody's waiting for you. Somebody is waiting for you. Everybody ain't waiting for the elders in the past and all these other people. Somebody's waiting for you Amen. to line up and trust and believe God and know that God is able to do above, abundantly above all that we ask to think according to some power within you. Amen. Amen. How many of you know? Amen. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead. That same power, now think about that. That same power that caused Jesus to get up off that tomb. Yes. That power resides in you. Hallelujah. Now is that power or that's what? Power. Now that's some power. Amen. How I many you remember that song? I got the power. Amen. I know Spencer do. Spencer's probably breaking it down. <laughs> and I was too. <laughs> amen. 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 You got the power. Amen. 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 So Hebrews 11, 1, it says, understand this. Now faith is. Faith yes. is right now. It's not yesterday, past. It's right now. now. Faith is now. So if you go over here, faith is right now. That's you go over there, faith is right, right now. now. Yes. Faith is always operating. It is now. Now yes. faith is. Now. now faith is. The substance. Now you know what? I was looking this up and I saw another word. It says now faith is the substance or the reality. The reality of things hoped for. Yes. The evidence of things not seen. Now let's look at this. This word substance or reality. <clears throat> Properly standing under a guaranteed agreement. Amen. A guaranteed agreement. Guaranteed. It, it, it's, it's guaranteed. Amen. A title or a key. Right. It's like when you make that final house payment. Right. That house. All right. And that All bank right. sends you that title. Amen. Or that deed. Come on, sir. And the bank come next month, say you owe us X amount of dollars. You say the devil is a lie because I have the title deed right here. It belongs to me. I don't owe you nothing. Thank you. Have a nice day. <clears throat> a title, a guaranteed title of deed that you have what God has spoken in your life. Amen. And can't nobody take that away from you. Amen. Amen. Nobody. <clears throat> it says title to a promise or property, a legitimate claim yes. entitling someone to what is guaranteed under the particular agreement. That's what faith is. It's not the substance of things, the reality of things hoped for. The things that God has spoken in your life. Amen. Faith is your ticket. Amen. Amen. It tells you you have the access to what God has spoken in your life. The promises that God has spoken in your life. So don't let nobody dictate to you Amen. anything different because you say, nope, this is my ticket right here. Right. Amen. My ticket says that I have it. I have it. I have it. Uh-oh. Amen. Amen. Take your time. Take your time. Amen. Hallelujah. I haven't had this Bible since 19... 95 when I was in Okinawa, Japan. All right. It's, 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 it's been around. It's been through some stuff. But amen. Glory to God. Okay. So now faith is. Faith is always right now. It's always in the presence. Understand that. Amen. 
Understand that it's right now, it's the substance of things hoped for, the ev evidence of things not seen. You don't see it, but you know by faith, because God said it. And God is not a man that he shall lie, or the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, it's done. It's a wrap. Amen. Even though you don't see it, when he told Abraham, he said, get out of your father's house and go to a place where I'm going to show you. All he did, he just went up and just left. He just went. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. And he went. Didn't know where he was going, but he just went. He trusted God. And it was counted unto him as righteousness. Amen. Come on now. Somebody yes. get with me. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now jump down to verse 6. It says, but without faith, without faith, it is, it, it, it is impossible to please God. Amen. It's impossible. So in order, if you want to please God, you have to operate in faith. Amen. you got to trust Him. Amen. Because it says without it, you can't do it. Amen. Apart from Him, you can do nothing. Without faith, you can't please God. Amen. So that's why you got to let go of your emotions and not be moved by your emotions and not be moved by what you see here, but only be moved by what you believe. Amen. Because if you move by what you see, hear, and feel, guess what is going to throw you off? Because you're being moved by your emotions. Amen. And you know what that can do for you. Yes, sir. Amen. So we got to have, without, without it, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe. Yes, sir. Must, you, you must believe. In other words, you can't sit there and wonder and go, well... Hmm. Let me think. Hmm. See, my, my question is, how can you sit there and analyze a God and, 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 and try to understand how God operates when a God that delivered about four, six million people out of bondage? Come on, sir. He caused all these plagues to come up on these people. <coughs> He led him into the wilderness. He was a cloud by day, a pillar of fire by night, caused a sea to part, and caused the land to become dry so six million people can cross over, caused everything to close up upon the enemy and wipe the enemy out. How can you analyze a God like that? You can't. How can you? And you mean to tell me you can't trust God? Come on, sir. Impossible. You said you must believe. In other words, you must be fully persuaded, no doubt, in your mind that God is able to do what He said He would do. Amen. Is this helping somebody? Amen. Amen. It's helping me. Hallelujah. Glory to His name. Because let me tell you, it ta it's taken faith for us in this transition. Yeah. And let me share this with you. I shared, on, I shared this Friday night. Come on, sir. This is prophetically speaking. What the enemy is going to try and do is try is he's trying to uproot your faith Woo! in your personal areas. Oh, because if you can do it over here, then that'll take your mind over here with Christian House Fellowship and what we need to do. Because if you're focusing on this, if you can't get this set up knowing that God is able to take care of this, then guess what? You're not going to focus on that because you're going to focus on this. And all of a sudden, you start speaking contrary to this. And next thing you know, you're speaking contrary to that. That's good. That's good. Man, that's good. So it's important in every aspect, in every area of your life. Amen. When God has spoken something to you, regardless of how crazy it sounds. Mm, come on, sir. Think of God. He just don't... He just don't speak natural like us. <clears throat> I mean, he just don't. I don't know why. Sometimes I, I have me scratching my head. I say, well, okay, Lord, if you say it, then by golly, you do it. If you bring me to it, you'll see me through it. You know, we'll get through it. I ain't worried about it. Bless your holy name. Amen. So you cannot allow, because that is what the enemy is going to do in the midst of this transition as we uh, purchase this land and start building. Because the way I see it, it's already done. We've already got the land. The building's already there. Musicians, everything, 500 seats, two sons, whatever we got to do is already done. I see it because God spoke before the foundation of this earth and this child comes to pass. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Already done. Yes. yes. By faith. Yes. By faith. Our ticket, yes. our agreement, yes. our title, yes. our deed. So when the enemy says something, say, read this. 
See this D right here? Talk to the hand. Yeah. All right. That's good, sir. Where was I at? See, this got me all over the place. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <clears throat> oh, I know. Okay, so anyway, so Friday. Now, understand this. In Daniel chapter 10, when you get a chance, you can go back and, you know, look through it, <coughs> read it, whatnot. Daniel set himself before the Lord to pray. He went on a 21-day fast. <coughs> and he prayed. And 21 days later, Gabriel showed up. And he said, your prayer, because you set your heart, your inner man, your mind, and your will, because you set it towards God, I have come with your answer. I have come with your answer the first day. But I was held up by the kings of Persia. Understand what is going on in the spiritual realm. When you set your heart, your mind, and will towards God, and you begin to pray and seek his face, Oh, there's a battle that's going on out there to keep you from receiving what you need to receive to get you out of faith, to get you into being moved by what you see here and feel. Amen. That's good, sir. You know me. Causing you to get out of position. And so Gabriel said, I came that first day. I remember over in Ephesians it says, you know, it's about spiritual wickedness. In high places, there are principalities and whatnot. This thing, it, it's real. Yes. The enemy does not want you to receive what God has for you. Mm. He does not want you to receive the answers to your prayer. Mm. But it's already done. Yes, yes, sir. Amen. No matter how you got to keep yourself down for the Lord and trust in Him and walk this thing out. And so anyway, Gabriel said, I came the first day because you set your heart on the first day. But not only that, he kept his heart towards God for the whole entire 21 days that he was on the fast and didn't give up, didn't waver, kept himself in position. And finally, Gabriel said, Michael had to show up. Michael had to show up and do battle. And once he cleared the path, I was able to slide right on in. Amen. Hey, that was good. And show up. Like that. <laughs> I think I might have took that from me. <laughs> so Michael showed up. Amen. And Gabriel said, Here I am. Amen. To give you the answer. Yes, sir. Because you set your heart towards me. Amen. Don't give up. In your time of prayer, mm. in what God has spoken to you. Mm. Woo! Because That's the good. answers to our prayers are That's good. That's good. And amen. amen. Come on, somebody give the Lord a hand. Praise. Hallelujah. 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 Ah, amen. Amen. So it says, He who comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is a water of of those who diligently seek him. You got this, you know what? This has to be your priority. Your Christian walk. It has to be. It, 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 it can't be one of those things where, okay, well, I'm going to play church on Sunday and then, you know, do whatever I want, you know, uh, Monday and Tuesday. Come on. And then play church on Wednesday and then, you know, Thursday and Friday, breaking it down and, you know, Doing the hustle and you know whatever <laughs> new dances they got out now. I don't know none of these new dances, but when I see them, it's look like you gotta be in serious tip-top condition because people be jumping, and bouncing. I'm just like, whoa! Thank God for the old school dances. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, you got to set yourself. If you can't, we we can't play church. It's time out for playing right. church. It's too oh, much. Right. It's, 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 it's too much playing church going on yes. right now. Amen. Come on, sir. People manipulating the, 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 the flock of God, calling them their sheep and, 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 and my sheep and asking their members, well, what y'all doing over there visiting this church? Y'all cheating on me and all that kind of foolishness like pimping God's flock. Come on, What sir. kind of madness is that? 
Yes, sir. Um, Come on, sir. Got people calling uh, 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 the pastor daddy and, and mama. And, you know, uh, the, the, that's, that's what a hooker calls her pimp, daddy. Let's, let, let, let's just make this plain. All right. All right. Go ahead, sir. That's what the hookers of the prostitute call. Daddy, daddy. Ain't got no business calling that man, man of God, no daddy. Mm. Come on, sir. See, see we, we liberated the free up here. Amen. 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 Y'all, you ain't got no people who are free to the Amen. 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 Good, sir. The Spirit of the Lord is there. There ain't nothing but a whole bunch of liberty up here. Amen. We're led by the Spirit of God. All right. Amen. Amen. All this madness going on. Okay, anyway, let's let's move on. All right, now, faith. Turn, turn me over to James, James chapter 2. See, this is very important. Because you can say you got all the faith in the world, but guess what? Rubber meets the road. That's Come on, we'll find out here. All right, now rubber meets the road. That's good yeah, when, that, when, when, when it's time for it to go into action, it's just like you, you ladies in here. And that brother say, "I love you." And that brother can't even go pick a flower out the field to bring to, but he loves you. You tell that side one, you better get on somewhere. Right. Say, oh, you love me. Okay, well let's go to church then. All right. All right. Now, let's go show up so we can introduce you to. Elder McGowan and, 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 and uh, Elder Charles, you know, yeah. they, 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 let's find out how much you love me. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, turn Spencer. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not. Good, good, good. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. But faith requires something of you, and it's called works. Now, we ain't talking about, you know, works like, uh, uh, you know, doing all that crazy stuff. We're talking about what God has spoken in you, trusting and believing it and putting it into action. In other words, saying what God has spoken. Recite what he says because God is always out looking for himself. And how he finds himself is by when he hears his word. Amen. Amen. If you say anything contrary to the word of God, he's not, he can't respond to that. He responds to his word. Amen. He respond, he's taking his word and placing it high above his name. That's how important and valuable his word is to you. That's why he, you realize the word of God is the most powerful thing in this universe. Yeah, man. Amen. Hebrews 11, 3 or 4, one of them says that by this world, it was framed by his words that he spoke. And he said, let there be. Bam, there it was. Amen. Let there be light. Bam, there it was. <laughs> let the earth come forth. Pow, there it was. Let the sea produce. Boom, there it was. The words that you speak are spirit and life. That's what Jesus said. Mm. Power. Yes. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Amen. You have the ability within you by the power of the Holy Spirit to change your environment. Amen. 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 That's the power that is in you. Mm. You just don't know how bad of a weapon you are. Mm -hmm. speak bad mouth power. Bad. Amen. Talk about it, sir. Amen. Bad. James 2.14. What does it profit, my brethren? All right. All right now. Talk about that. Brother. What does it profit? In other words, let's look what this means. Yeah, what does it profit? A believer accumulates in life by living in faith. In other words, the more you walk it out, the more testimonies you have, the more you trust God. Come on, sir. The, 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 you trust God in this area, guess what? You go to a new level, you got a new devil. Come on, sir. You got a bigger devil. Talk about it. But just like David said, just like the Lord delivered that, that lion and that bear, you. I got something for you. We're going to talk about that later, so I don't want to go all into that right now. Is that all right? That's Amen. All right. <laughs> but as you begin to walk this thing out and you begin to see the goodness of God, how God led you through, yeah. and you've accomplished because you trust and believe in Him, you have Amen. faith in Him. Amen. That's called the accumulative advantage. Yes, sir. 
In other words, that allows you to put yourself in position to minister to somebody as they come along yes. with the same issues yes. that you have that, that you've dealt with. Amen. Amen. I went so. through a trying experience back in December. And let me tell you, I had a choice. And God told me, He said, You will not mourn and cry before the people. And to this day, there has been people coming and talking to me about the same thing that I went through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It ain't about you. Right, right, right. It's about what he wants to do in you. Amen. Talk about it, son. You know? Amen. So it says, what does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Mm, that's good. Now, this, this, this means a deed, action that comes out, that, I'm sorry, that carries out an inner desire. Mm -hmm. Psalms 37, 4 says that, talks about the desires of our heart right. that God grants us to us. Now, these ain't like my own self desire. Like, you know, people get saved, oh, Lord, I think you're going to give me this uh, uh, 7 Series BMW, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you can't even change the tires on your bicycle. And yet God don't, you know, I'm for you, you know, the foolishness. The desires are the desires that he's placed with inside you, that he's embedded inside you before the foundations of this world, that at the appointed time, he calls you to crowd and begin to, yes, Lord. It causes your faith in you to start rising up. Causes that seed inside of you to burst forth and begin to take root and start sprouting up. Amen, amen. That's what he's talking about. Amen. So there's things that he's placed within inside of us that requires us, it's going to require us to have faith. Amen. Do you understand? It's requiring a whole lot of faith to know what God has said about the building up the street. Amen. Yes, sir. So I'm saying the building because I see it. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. It requires faith. Yes, it does. When Nehemiah, when, when, when the king said, you know, Nehemiah, you're looking kind of sad. Oh, are you sick? What's going on? And Nehemiah said, yeah, my heart is, you know, it's heavy. It's trouble because the, was it, the gate, the wall. Yeah. The wall, you know, it, it needs to be re repaired. And the king said, okay, I'm going to hook you up. I got some people in position. I'm going to send this letter. Wherever you go, you just give it out. They're going to give you what you need. Wow. They're going to give you what you need. Don't you know God is in the touching people business? Amen. And he can touch somebody's heart Amen. way over in East Jerusalem somewhere and say, give to this ministry. Amen. Give to this person yes, for sir. the work that needs to be done in yes. Sierra Vista, Arizona. It ain't about no bigger than this. Woo, that's good but the God in whom we serve Amen. Amen. ain't nothing too hard for our God. Amen. That's why you can't limit him and put him in a box. That's right. Amen. Amen. When you put him in a box, you limit yourself. Mm -hmm. My God is bigger. Yes, he is. The God who stands outside of eternity and governs time but can yet stop and step into time and come see about us. Yes. That's the God in whom we serve. Amen. The God who has no beginning and no end. Can you fathom that in that infinite mind of a finite mind of yours? Absolutely not. Mm. How can God not have a beginning and not have an end? No, because you know we all we know is time. Right. That's it, sir. My time started April 30th, 1965. Mm. I don't know anything else before that. Woo, that's good. But God always was. Yeah. Yeah. Always will. Yeah. Right now. Governs the universe. Yes, sir. At the snap of his finger, this whole thing can go boom. Yep. The God in whom we serve. Yes, sir. And that's good, sir. So it says, can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, one of you says to them, depart in peace. Be warmed and filled. But you do not give them the things which are needed. For the body. Where is the advantage in that? None. Where is the advantage? And if you look over in, uh, I think it's Matthew 25, after, you know, where Jesus talks about the talents and whatnot, and 
And it says, uh, you know, and, and they asked the question, they said, well, you know, when, when did we give to you, Lord? And he said, well, you know, when you gave to so-and-so over here, when you gave to so-and-so over here, as you've done unto them, you've done unto me. Amen, amen. You, 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 yeah, yeah, say that again. God, done it unto the least of these. Because you've given to them, you've given unto me. That's stepping out of faith, knowing. And, and, and see, that's the problem. Now, of, of course, you know, you know, some people ain't nothing but a bunch of country sidewinders just L-A-Z-Y don't want to W-O-R-K. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right, right. But you know, God will give you the sermon for those. Amen. But then there are some that do need and whatnot, and God will prick on your heart to give to whomever it, it may be. Yes, sir. And if God is doing it, then by all means you do it because God is trying to get you to release something so you can put something back in your hand. But if you stay in your cell phone, well, Lord, this all this last five dollars I got is gonna last me till next week. Well, guess what? God trying to get five dollars out of your hand so he can put five hundred in your hand. <coughs> but you're so busy looking at the five dollars and not worried about it and focusing on anything else. And God is trying to do something bigger and greater in your life so his light can shine so you can testify. Matthew 5, 13 and 16. Let your light. Actually, wait a minute. John 8, 12. He that, uh, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Right. I am, any other words that were like the manifestations of God's self-existence. <coughs> Divine illumination to reveal and impart light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. I am the manifestation of God's self-existence. Divine illumination to reveal and impart life. Now as Jesus received, he gave. Amen. Now as you receive, you give. Amen. So let your light shine. In other words, let the manifestation of God's self-existence come out of your life and let it shine before men so that they may glorify your Father who is in heaven. Amen. Amen. That's trusting God and stepping out in faith because it's going to cause others to be drawn to you. Amen. And then you point them to Jesus because it's all about Him. Amen. It's all about Him. See, when you glorify Him, when you allow Him to move in you and through you, He said, what, what, what? Part of the song that, that, that they sang today? Draw? Zip. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'm going to do some drawing. Amen. So if we point him to him, then he's going to do something. Amen. Amen. So let your light, the revelation of who he is in you, in you. There's people out there that need you. Amen. Come on, talk. A lot of people ain't gonna pay attention to anything. I, you know, they probably look at me like I'm crazy. Right? Like, who the little short, big-haired rascal running around talking all blah, 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 blah. And then the person short of me, Brother Spencer, could come and say the exact same thing. We just saying, no, I'm losing time. I'm claiming that. I finally got somebody in here that's shorter than me, and I can. Boy, I think, thank you, Lord. <laughs> I love that brother. But finally, somebody's a little shorter than me. And I ain't got to worry about, in a couple years, they're going to be taller than me like these kids. I remember when Timmy was shorter than me. Now I'm looking up at Timmy. I'm like, God told Mighty. Amen. That's what. Spencer is done growing. <laughs> but I'm going to be an inch taller than him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> y'all out of control. I'm telling pass on y'all. Y'all out of control. <laughs> amen, amen. Amen, amen, sir. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Well, show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Amen. In other words, I will put some action to this thing. Amen. Right? It's an action word. Yes. Again, let's go back. Sisters, these brothers telling you, I love you. Come on, sir. Brother can't even take you out to get, uh, 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 take you out to the dollar menu at McDonald's. <laughs> but he loves you. Come on, sir. <laughs> Tell that brother, no, 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 brother. We need to see some real action. 
Amen. Let's Amen. make this happen. Some real action. Amen. Bring me some flowers or something. Take me to some nice fancy restaurant. Let's go up to two signs and, 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 and let, let show me you love me. Don't tell me. Show me something. Amen. 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 Same thing with faith. Faith without works is dead. Don't say, well, I got a whole lot of faith. Oh, really? Well, guess what? Soon as you open your mouth and say it. <laughs> and he's going to show up and say, all right, well, let's find out how much faith you got. <clears throat> Do you really trust God? Do you really believe God? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, sir. And at the moment, as soon as that, he just turned up a smidge. by works when he offered up Isaac, his son, on the altar. Now remember that. He told when, 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 when Abraham and Isaac, when they were about to head up to where they was getting ready to go, because uh, the angel spoke to him and said, you need to offer up your son. And then Abraham looked at the men and said, me and the son, we're going up to worship, but we will be back. He was already convinced and knew that whatever happened, that boy was coming back with him because he trusted and believed God. Oh my God, you got to know that your God is Amen. able to do. Amen. We don't serve no weak, Amen. shucking and jiving God. No, we don't. We serve the true living God. Mm. The only one. Mm. All these other religions or whatever, they other gods, whoever their main person is that they worship, are still in the grave. Our Lord, our God is the only one that got up out the grave. Amen. Jesus said, 
go to the other side. So they get in the boat, okay, storms all over the place. Jesus walking on water. Jesus going to the other side because he told them to go to the other side. Now nah, it's a ghost, it's a ghost. Everybody's scared. Jesus said, don't be scared, it's me. Right. Peter said, well, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come on the water. Jesus spoke a rainbow word, come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water. Yes. Come on, man. Now think about this. Think about this. It took faith for Peter to get out of that boat and to get on that water and walk on that water to Jesus. The storms were still going on. The waves were still boisterous. But his focus was on Jesus. It didn't matter what was going on around him. And so many times when we walk in this faith walk out, we get to the point, Spence, come here. Stay right there. We are this close to Jesus. Yes, sir. We are this close to what he has for us. This close. So many times we get so close. We put oh God get so close. And then we Turns up the knob just a little bit. And everything gets to going crazy. Now, when I started out over there walking towards him, my focus was on him. The storms were still there. Everything was still going on. The wind was yelling and screaming, kick it up. Kick it up the storm. But my focus was on Jesus. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I get right there. And all of a sudden. I take my eyes and I get caught up. And that's what the enemy does. It says give no room. You can't give the enemy nothing. And that's why it tells you to keep on the whole armor. The whole armor. You don't have a choice. The whole armor. The Bible says put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand the wiles, the strategies, the devices of the devil. Amen. If you don't have on the whole armor <coughs> of God, then he has an avenue to get in. Amen. And so what happens? When it's close, and Peter took his eyes off, mm. he got caught up. Mm. Oh, man. Look at this. What? Oh, okay. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Controlling God's people like that. 
Where in the Bible does it show Jesus control the people like that? Right, right. Ain't nowhere in the Bible. Right, Amen. right. I don't know how I got on this, but there's but a bunch of mess. Gotta walk this thing out. Amen. 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 Let nobody control you like that. That's foolishness. Yes, sir. Amen. I don't see nowhere in the Bible. Jesus controlled people, grab them by the neck of their neck. You gonna do what I tell you to do. Do you understand me? That don't happen like that. <clears throat> I mean, have you locked down in church seven days a week? You go Sunday morning, all you got time to run home is eat half a hamburger and you got to be back there for evening service. That's out of control. I'm sorry. See, ain't y'all glad for liberty? Amen. Right here in this house. Amen. So you can be the man or woman of God that he's called you to be. Amen. Amen. Woo. Amen. Amen. So again, faith without works is dead. Turn me over to Romans chapter 10. Is this helping somebody? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Romans 14. You know, I, from you know, time to time, you know, I could be talking with people, and you know, I hear people say, they say, well, you know, people know what they're supposed to do. I'm like, well, really? <laughs> they do know? How? What are you doing? Romans 10, 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed. Come on, sir. And how shall they believe in him <coughs> in whom they have not heard? Come on, sir. That's good. How can they do what they're supposed to do if ain't nobody mentioned it to them? Mm -hmm. Are they just supposed to go, um, <laughs> um, oh, the light bulb done went off. Uh, Absolutely not. Come on, sir. That's good. My Bible tells me, and how shall they hear without a preacher? How many preachers we got in this house? Everybody hands me up in here. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it don't mean being a preacher up here. It means being a preacher out in your workplace where you work at when you're walking through Walmart, Fry, Safeway, and, 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 and wherever you're at up in Tucson at the mall and all over the place. You're a preacher. You're a preacher there. Amen. You're a preacher there. Yes, you are. I don't mean just up here in, in, in the pulpit. It means out there in the workplace, wherever you at. You are a preacher. Why? Because you have the good news. Amen. You have the gospel. Amen. You have the life, burial, uh, what, the, the death, life, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Did I say that right? Yes. Thank you. Amen. Amen. You have it within you. Yes. So you are a preacher. How will they hear it unless it is preached to them? Amen. They just ain't going to sit down and all of a sudden... Boom, the light bulb gonna go off. And oh, Jesus! How? Oh, wow! What a concept! Absolutely not. Right, right. That's good, sir. It takes us getting out of complacency and getting out of ourselves and getting to Him and walking it out in faith. Yes. Let your light shine before men so that they may glorify your Father who art in heaven. Can you yes. say amen? Amen! amen. amen. Woo, that's good, sir. And how? So again, and how shall they hear without a preacher? Now that word preacher means to preach a message publicly and with conviction, not condemnation. Right. Woo! That's good, sir. Conviction, not condemnation. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Not telling people if you don't go to church on Sunday, your head gonna roll off your shoulder. Come on, or sir. Or you gonna go out and cross the street and the truck gonna run you over. Come on, sir. Talk about the it. The devil is a lie. Stresses. That's right. The truth ain't in them. Amen. Amen. So again, to preach a message publicly and with conviction stresses the victory, the victory, the victory that we've already won. Amen. We've already got the victory. We're not yes, fighting sir. to get victory. Amen. We're already in position. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Stresses the victory 
of God's gospel. Woo! It's through the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Woo! God's gospel message and the totality of his good news. Amen. That's what the preacher is supposed to do. Amen. That's what we're called to do. Come on, sir. Talk and again, it's not those that are signed to be in the pulpit. If you got Jesus, yes. if you know Jesus, if you're born again, if you study his word, if you yield yourself to the Holy Spirit, then by God, you can be out somewhere and God will touch you and say, tell this person, blah, 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 whatever. Mm. And you go do it. Amen. Watch what happens. Amen. Even though they may not, they may look at you like you got a, a, a third eye right here in the middle of your forehead. Mm -hmm. The fact is, God told you to do it, so that was a seed song. Amen. So then somebody else may come along and water that seed, and God gets the increase. Woo! Get out of yourself. Amen. 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 That's good, sir. We, 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 have, we understand. We have, to, we have to make it about Him. Him. Yes. Hey. Amen. Because when we make it about Him, because see, we're dead to Christ. Amen. Amen. No longer I that live, but Him, Christ that lives in me. Now the life that I live, I live by the faith of Him. Amen. So I'm dead. I'm just a dead man walking around with Christ. Amen. I'm That's good, sir. Of course. Of course. Amen. Jesus, okay, wherever you want to go, let's do it. So that's why there's no need for you to feel embarrassed or if somebody start looking at you and cussing you out because you went up to him because the Lord told you to say just go tell him Jesus loves you. Uh -huh. Loves you. Jesus loves you. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Walk away. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, sir. That's good. Somebody else come along. Doctor, preacher, so and so. Right. It ain't about a bit more than a man on the moon. Amen. You don't even know the elbows mm -hmm. from the rear end. Come on, sir. You know, trying to proclaim stuff. Part of the sent church. They, they were sent. Yes. As it was written. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of, plea, uh, of peace, mm. who bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed in our report? So then, faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the, the word, word of God. The word of God. So they have to hear something. And it's called the word of God in order for their faith to be stirred up. Amen. Again, preachers. Yes, sir. Everybody in here. Mm. Don't nobody escape this. Y'all some preachers now. Amen. Amen. So y'all, never y'all out in the marketplace. The Holy Spirit say, "Hey, go over there and just tell this person." And, and, and you know, and, you know, a lot of times it, it, it's so funny because it don't have to be. You have to give somebody a scripture, right? You know, it, 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 it don't. God can just tell you go tell somebody just to speak to them. How's your day? Right. Are you having a good day? I want you to have a good day. Mm -hmm. I say that every day. He sure does. That's, that's all it could take. Mm -hmm. It's just by you doing that simple thing to cause something to get stirred up inside of them. You just don't know. Stop trying again. Stop trying to analyze what God is doing. Just let go and let God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your understanding and knowledge him in all your ways. And he shall guide your path. Be not wise in their own eyes. And it will be health and nerve to your bones. Amen. Woo. Amen. That's how easy it is. Amen. It's not hard. Amen. You know what makes the gospel hard? Exactly. People knuckleheads. Yep. 
They want to take it and try to make it their own thing to make it about them so people will worship them. None of that. None of that. That's why it's hard. Amen. And then they, you know, bring people under that bondage and that foolishness. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm almost done. Are we okay? Yes, sir. Amen. You got time. Go ahead. So again, we have the responsibility of walking this thing out in faith, trusting and believing what God wants to do. Yes, sir. Now, y'all heard my story, my testimony many times where I was at just, what is this, 2016? Yep. Just three years ago. Just three, just three years ago. <coughs> the first Sunday of 2013 is when I got my little short big head self behind back in church. After fussing, complaining, and being mad, and yelling and screaming with God and all this wonderful stuff, and I had a choice. I could have continued, because even in my mess, God was talking to me. I'm like, man, leave me alone. I ain't doing this no more. What part of that you ain't understanding? Go ahead, sir. I'm being real. Yes, sir. But that didn't phase God. No, nope. He said, I want you to get back in church. Mm. Go ahead, sir. Finally, I said, okay. And so, boom, 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 took steps, took steps. 2014, February 8th, 2014, is when God apprehended, arrested me, whatever you want to call me. I had just come back from Tucson, taking my uh, mother out for her birthday. And I was getting ready to watch this basketball game. And Lord, soon, I mean, I was waiting for this game, too. One of the good college basketball games. Waiting. It's like, yeah, all right, getting ready to start. They about to tip off. I said, cut the TV off and go to the back. So I cut the TV off and go to the back. All of a sudden, it's like somebody turned faucets on in my eyes. I just started moving and crying. And Lord, so we began to wrestle with me like, like, like Jacob. Took me down. <coughs> I said, okay, Lord, all right, let's do whatever we have to do. So I just submit myself to God. Continue to submit myself to God. Continue to humble myself. Continue, continue, continue. Because it's not about Johnny Blair. Mm -hmm. It's about God's people. Yes. There are people that need you. Amen. Regardless of what you think. Regardless of what you've done. Let me tell you something. We done all done some things up in here. I can run you down the laundry list of some things that Johnny Juanrico Blair has done. But it ain't got nothing to do with the price of tea in China when it comes to the things of God. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Yes. Thank you, Lord. All things have passed away. Amen. Yes. All things have become new. Amen. See, the reason why you at where you at is because you not allowed to be where you were to keep hold of you. So now you can be where you at and not worry about where you were. Amen. Because now you're in him. You're not over there with him. Mm -hmm. Come about on, the enemy. Come on, sir. You're now in Christ. Yes. Amen. All things. Oh, all God. things. It don't matter what you did. Right. It don't matter. We all have done some things. Mm -hmm. All have done some All that's passed away. Mm -hmm. He ain't keeping no record. Oh, let me see. All right. You, what, what, you did this? Oh, yep. Mm -hmm. Pass away. Yes. We are, you know what? We are our worst enemy. Yes. yes. Because we have a hard time forgiving ourselves. Come on, sir, talk about it. We have a hard time. We think we can't do nothing because we done did this. We done slapped the dog, then, then yeah. cussed the neighbor out, then, then, then gave somebody the one-finger salute going down the highway. <laughs> and it's so hard for us to forgive ourselves when God has already forgiven us. Yes, sir. See, the more you don't want to forgive yourself, come on, the, 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 the more you will not operate on what God has for you. And again, that's how the enemy operates. See, if he can get you out of faith over here in these things right here, 
See, if, if, if he gets you right here, then you don't have to worry about you coming together with the rest of everybody trying to trust and believe. Because he'll get you out of the picture, or, or you come into the picture speaking contrary to what God has spoken. See, so that's, and understand this, that's what the enemy is going to do. I'm telling you, by the sound of the Lord, this is a prophetic word, the Lord said, that's what the enemy is going to do. He's going to try to stir, uh, uh, stir things up in your life and cause you to get out of faith over the areas over here. So that you can't concentrate over here. But you got to know within yourself, if God spoke, it's already done. So once you just have to tell enemy, say, no, I'm sorry, now faith is the substance or the reality. In other words, my title, my deed, my agreement, it says I have what I have, so shut up. The end. Amen. The end. Amen. Yeah, good, sir. Ain't no need to argue with the enemy. That's good, sir. Ain't, ain't, ain't no need to argue with folk. Right. Yes, sir. Right. Come on, sir. Don't argue with folk. Come on, folks is crazy. <coughs> they will say all kinds of things to get you to open your mouth and say something contrary, and all of a sudden the enemy say, I, I got you. I got you. Woo. You spoke it. I got you. I got legal right to operate in your life because you spoke it. So just sometimes you just got to tell people, shut up. That's it. That's good. Dig in. All right. Ain't no comeback from shut up. Shut up. What you mean shut up? Shut up. That's what it means. <laughs> <laughs> See how easy that is? <laughs> Amen. Let's go over here to, uh, let's go over here to Samuel. We're going to wrap this up with David. I mean, yeah, you know, I heard about David like 499.2 times. So we're going to add another 0 0.8 to it, maybe 500 even. Amen? Amen. Because it took David's faith mm. to not be moved mm. by what church folk were saying. Mm. The children of Israel, God's chosen people, scared, scared straight. I mean scared. So bad the leader was scared. If you got a scared leader, then guess what? You in trouble. You are in trouble if your leader's scared. Because how can a scared leader lead you into victory if he's scared himself? It ain't going to happen. No. Okay, well, you know, we know the story. We know what happened, you know, about the Philistines and, and the children of Israel. By lining up, they, they're getting ready to fight. And it said, you know, the, the, the champion uh, showed up, which is Goliath. Okay, now, understand, we all understand what a champion is. Champion is somebody that know how to fight and know how to handle their business. You don't call somebody a champion, they get beat up every time they step out there. <laughs> don't call them that. Don't call them no champion. <laughs> Look at them like they're crazy. Boy, if you don't get out of here, you're about to get your next beat. But Goliath would call the champion because that brother could fight. Yes, he could. He was the top man. Yes, he was. So anyway, now look at this. Hold on, let me find where I'm going to be at. Okay. And the Philist, uh, 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 1 Samuel 17, uh, Verse 8, it says, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me show something real quick here. It, 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 it describes Goliath, you know. And when you break it out, Goliath was somewhere roughly about nine feet tall. Yeah. That's, you know, that's a pretty, pretty big brother. Yeah, he's, pretty, he, he's pretty large. Yeah, he was. You know, and, and, and he let everybody know that he was large. But then it goes on to describe his weapons and whatnot. And those weapons, you know, of bronze. What we have to understand is the metal bronze is, a, is associated with armor and the trusting in human strength. So Goliath, all he could do was trust in his ability, in his strength. Yes. That's all he could trust in. That's it. Now Saul and them, the children of Israel, was supposed to be trusting in God. Uh -huh. Come on, sir. But they were scared. Yes, they were. Hold on to that now. Okay. Verse 8. Then he stood and cried out to the armies of Israel and said to them, Why have you come out to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? And you servants of Saul, choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. 
If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then he will be your servant. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and servants. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight. Now listen to this. When Saul, when the leader, understand, when the leader in all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed. In other words, they were they were torn down. That's what that word means. They were torn down and greatly afraid. You can't do nothing with nobody if they torn down and greatly afraid. You know what's going to happen? They're going to get your behind whipped. Because they ain't ready to fight. Come on, talk about You don't want to surround yourself with somebody like that. You know, back in the day, you know, I had to... You know, a lot of talking going on inside the club. I'll meet you outside, you know, and you know, you ready to get down, all of a sudden your boys then ran and left you off. <laughs> and all of a sudden now you like, oh, you get up out of here. <laughs> Hold on, y'all, bear with me. I got some good stuff here to show you. So, yeah, so they were they were dismayed and greatly afraid. So, Jesse sends his son, David. He says, go down and uh, go see about your brothers. But well, we know what David was doing. He was, you know, tending the sheep. Feeding his father's sheep. This is the attitude. To feed the sheep, the word of God. And to entrust the battle in God's hand. Amen. Trust but can't nobody be our God. No, can't nobody. See, that's why it's so important that you get yourself in a place in a house of worship Amen. where the word of God is given to you. Amen. Not in a place where somebody's trying to control and manipulate you. Amen. But allow you to be the man and woman of God that he has ordained and called you to be. Amen. Because when you Go to battle with enemy. Sometimes the bishop, reverend, doctors, and all them other preachers can't be there with you. This is you got to handle this. Mm -hmm. So you got to set yourself apart mm -hmm. in that time of worship, studying the word, knowing what the word says, because mm -hmm. that's what's going to defeat the enemy. Mm -hmm. Not you crying <coughs> and telling the enemy to stop. Mm -hmm. Leave me alone. That ain't going to do it. What's going to do it is the word of God, the most. Powerful thing in the universe. Amen. The word of God that is housed inside of you. Amen. You know why? Because God is inside of you. Amen. Because he said, no longer will I dwell in tents made by hands. Amen. Amen. But I'm a dwell inside <coughs> my creation. Mm. Mm. The Amen. very God that controls this universe lives inside of you. Amen. And you have his word. Amen. Amen. That is what's going to be your enemy. Air time. Air time. Air time. Air time. Air time. Not every air time. Air time. Air time. Air time. Air time. So, and, 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 and the Philistine, verse uh, 16, it says, and the Philistine drew near and presented himself. Forty days, morning and evening. This joke is showing up running his mouth. Forty days. Can you imagine that? Mm -hmm. They had to listen to this rascal morning to evening. And him bellyaching. I'm like somebody. Look, you know what? If I just get my butt whipped, I don't care. But I'm gonna fight this right. We gonna find out. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm tired of hearing all this nonsense. Mm -hmm. Job, Jeff. Thank you. Talking all that who y'all that nonsense. <laughs> Sorry. My jump jacket is good. <laughs> I mean, think about it. How many times has God spoken and the enemy just showed up keep talking in your ear? Mm. Enough is enough. Mm. I mean, even growing up, you know, back when I was in school. I mean, you know, you had a bully in school, but eventually enough was enough when that rascal just kept picking on you, kept picking on you. Eventually you got tired and started to fight. Mm -hmm. And when you fought, that joker left you alone. Mm -hmm. So something inside you got to cause you to be stirred up. Mm -hmm. 
to fight with the most powerful man in the universe. And that's the word of God. Amen. Amen. Somebody give God a hand. Amen. Amen. That's good stuff, sir. Amen. 40 days and nights. Jesus, soon as he was baptized, I believe it was, he had fasted and was led into the wilderness to deal with sin. It's so important that when we have that time of separation, and sanctification before we begin any battle in ministry that we set ourselves mm -hmm. with the word of God. I, I mean, I, I can't stress it enough Amen. how important it is. God's already given you the victory. He's already given it to you. We have the victory. We won! Amen. We have it. We won! Hallelujah! We won. We have it. We have it. And see what happens is that when the enemy speaks, turn. Let me show you this real quick. Y'all don't have to turn it. I'll turn it. I don't know what kind of show me this this morning. Let me get that Proverbs. Proverbs. Read. Proverbs 7. And you go back and read this in your own time. You don't have to turn it. Proverbs 7. You can start at verse 1 and read all the way to the end. But, but what, what it's talking about is, is, is it's talking about this, you know, young man and just people in general. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going about their business, but then all of a sudden something speaks out to them. that grabs their attention. That ain't no good for them, but they can't discern it. Because the, the, the scripture says that, and, and, and so among the simple, which means the silly, mm -hmm. I, per I, 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 I perceive among the youth, a young man devoid of understanding, empty-headed, ain't got nothing in him. But playing church. But then you go on and read the story, but the part I want to get down to is verse 21. It says, with her enticing speech, she caused him to yield. Because of the knowledge and the doctrine that was spoken, that caused him to say, hmm, my, my, my. It caused him to stop. It got his attention. With her flattering lips, she seduced him. And because he was devoid of understanding and empty-headed, it says immediately he went after her as an ox goes to a slaughter. Or, now listen to this, as a fool. Mm -hmm. Now, a fool is somebody that know to do better, but they don't want to. Mm -hmm. So again, you got a lot of people playing church, knowing they need to be the church and stop playing church, but they just want to do what they want to do. But it says, to the correction of the stocks, till an arrow struck his liver. Mm. Now let me share something with you. When the liver fails to filter toxins mm -hmm. from the blood properly, hepatitic encephalopathy, hope I said that right. Mm -hmm. Should I say that right, Bridget? There you go. <laughs> She's a nurse. <laughs> Can result, listen to this, causing confusion and other mental symptoms such as hemorrhaging. So what happens is that in the speech, it, it grabs your attention because you're devoid of understanding you don't allow your time to just focus on what God is saying to you so you can have that word in time of battle. See, it's just like football. If you don't go to practice, if you don't train in the offseason, you try to get yourself out on that field and see what's going to happen, you're going to get your head racked up. Mm -hmm. So you have to prepare before you get out there. And when we was coaching, when I was coaching out there, we tell the kids, it's not about Friday night. It's what you're doing in the off-season mm -hmm. when ain't nobody watching. See, when you show up on Friday night, you prepare because you prepared yourself in the off-season when wasn't nobody watching, when wasn't no lights glaring at people. Ah! 
not yelling and screaming and cheering you on. You was in the weight room working it out, training, going over plays, studying plays, running routes, doing whatever you needed to do. So when Friday night came, you was ready. Right. 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 Amen. So again, so the enemy's being caught your attention. And now, because the person is not prepared, all of a sudden now they're confused. And we know who the author of confusion is. Stay focused on the Lord. Amen. Trust in Him. Amen. Walk it out. Amen. Somebody's waiting for you. Amen. 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 Let's go back to the day. Is this okay? Amen. Still got a little bit more time. I'm almost done. Speed it up just a little bit. So anyway, let's go to, um, so anyway, we, we all understand the story. You know, David shows up, he talks to his brothers, his brothers get upset, man, what are you doing down here? Blah, 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 shit, you be back home, you know, taking care of the sheep, doing whatever. And David's like, look, I'm just down here. And, you know, you hear uh, the live belly aching and, you know, he said, well, what's going to happen? Well, you know, the king will give you money, give you uh, wives and all this stuff. That's still with impressing the brothers. Money and women, oh my gosh, it was bought up. We don't want none of that. What? We scared. We scared for real, on no purpose. And so, <clears throat> no, David said, no, no, no. What's going to happen who takes away the reproach? That's what I, what's going to happen who take away the reproach of this individual that's running his mouth against the children of God? Do you know who you are? You, are, you have a covenant established with God. Amen. And so, you know, David talking to Saul, he said, look, you know, I'll go fight, I'll take care of this. And they was like, no, nah, you can't. He said, look. And then we go back to the, remember he said, look. Because I'm talking about the, remember that cumulative advantage? Mm -hmm. David said, well, because my God, whom I serve, because I'm in covenant with him, because he delivered that lion and that bear in my hand, then this uncircumcised individual who's not in covenant with God will fall just like they did. Mm -hmm. Uncircumcised. In other words, he ain't in covenant with God. I'm in covenant with God. You're in covenant with God. Amen. But we finna make this thing happen because I'm sick and tired of all this noise. This rascal been running his mouth 40 days, 40 nights, and I'm tired of it. Enough is enough. So then the king said, all right, we ain't go for it. And so then he started dressing David up in all the armor and then again put that bronze helmet on. Nope, leave that bronze alone because that's man's way of thinking, man's way of doing things. The king was scared to wear it. Why should I wear it? Why should I trust in something you don't even trust in? I don't want it. So what do you do? You go over to the brook. I understand this brook. Fresh water. Mm -hmm. Living water. Yes, sir. Let's put out five smooth stones. Five. Woo! We know who the chief cornerstone is. His name is Jesus. Jesus. So he reached down and he pulls out five smooth Stones. Five smooth stones out of the water. Just like when Jesus showed up, John the Baptist. I was baptized. I got to baptize. So he takes Jesus and he baptizes him. He comes up. And then that's when he goes into the wilderness and deals with the enemy. Mm. So David reaches down before he had to do battle with Goliath. Put out those stones. Again, who's the chief cornerstone? Jesus. Jesus. All right. So that water, that living water, that's smoothing the stones out, huh? making them ready for service, making them ready for use. Who's about to put them in his bag? The other four stones represents us, because we're the lively stones. Amen. We're the trust in the first stone, the cornerstone. We don't trust in our body. We don't trust in our mind. We don't trust in our own abilities. We trust in Him. When we line ourselves up in Him, Romans 12, 2 said, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Yeah. Woo! That's good. Go ahead, sir. So those other four stones represent us, but we trust in the chief cornerstone. His name is Jesus. Yes. His name is Jesus. And David, you know, his clown, he's still belly and still won't shut up. Let me tell you something about David. I don't know what y'all say, but I got to say this because I believe 
David was from St. Louis, Missouri, the show me state. <laughs> Let me tell you why, because that clown got to talking and talking, and we from the show me state said, well, you keep running your mouth, brother, you're going to have to show me, or else I'm going to show you. David said, enough is enough. Brother, I'm about to twist your cap and put you to sleep. Mm. <laughs> then have enough of all this belly aching. Mm -hmm. Running your mouth. Mm -hmm. Define the armies of the living God. I dare you. You can't show me, I'm about to show you. Wham! And he released that chief cornerstone. His name is Jesus. Woo! Took it out of the brook. Never was. Anybody thirsty. Come and drink and you will never thirst again. Amen. After Jesus came up out of that water, he went into the wilderness and dealt with the enemy. As soon as they took them stones out, he dealt with the enemy. Pow! Amen. He had faith and confidence and trust in God. Mm -hmm. And that stone hit that rascal right in his forehead. Mm -hmm. Clunk. And David yeah. told him, not only am I going to kill your fool behind, but I'm going to cut your head off. Now see, that brother from Detroit. <laughs> 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 you got up in the house. <laughs> The show me stayed in Motown. <laughs> Breaking it off. <laughs> yeah, bro, that's me and you. We, 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 we can handle David. Yeah, Just remember, I'm taller than you, though. Amen, <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah. So, anyway, so David runs over and takes Goliath's sword in what he trusted in his law, his principle, and used it against him. Wow! And because of his faith, because he refused not to be moved by what he heard, what he saw, and what he felt. He was only moved by what he was believing. That was the fact that he was in covenant with the true and living God. It caused all them other rascals to finally rise up and to know who they were in God. And they went in pursuit and defeated the enemy. That's why you can't make it about you. It all has to be about him. Somebody shout! Hallelujah! Amen! about yes. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Know who you are mm. in him. Mm. Release who you are mm. in him. Amen. This is a ministry right here yes, sir. where you are going to get the true word of God. Amen. You're going to get truth up in here. <clears throat> Bishop Tim Jones mm. will release you and allow you to be the man or woman of God that God has called you to be. Amen. That's real. Amen. You won't be manipulated. Mm -hmm. You won't be pimped. Mm. None of that. Amen. We want you to be who God has called you to be. Amen. You could be the best you that you could ever be. Amen. You don't have to be like nobody else. Yes. This thumbprint right here, nobody else has this thumbprint right here. Thank God there ain't another one of me somewhere walking around. Yeah. Amen. This is it right here. There's no other you. You don't have to be like Mike, mm -hmm. LeBron, Seth, <laughs> any of them. Be who God created and ordained for you to be. Walk it out. Trust him. God will see you through. If God before you, who can be against you? Amen. 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 Amen.